in the quiet town of Fayetteville, West Virginia. A family's worst nightmare unfolded on a cold December night in 1945. A devastating house fire would leave a tragic mystery unsolved for decades. With five children seemingly vanishing without a trace. This is the story of the Sauter children disappearance. A chilling tale of heartbreak, determination, and unanswered questions. George and Jenny Sauter, Italian immigrants, had built a life for themselves and their 10 children in the heart of West Virginia's coal country. George, a successful coal trucking business owner, and Jenny, a devoted homemaker, were pillars of their community, known for their hard work and commitment to their family. As World War II came to an end and the holiday season approached, the Sauter family prepared to celebrate Christmas in their charming two-story home. Little did they know that their world would soon be shattered by an event that would change their lives forever. On the night of December 24th, 1945, the Sauter family settled into bed, expecting a joyous Christmas morning. But around 1 a.m., Jenny Sauter was awakened by a strange phone call from an unfamiliar woman, <laughs> laughing and asking for someone Jenny didn't know. Dismissing it as a prank or a wrong number, she returned to bed. Shortly after, she was roused again, this time by the sound of something hitting the house's roof with a loud thud, followed by a rolling noise. It wasn't long before Jenny realized that the house was on fire. She, George, and four of their children, Sylvia, Marion, George Jr., and John managed to escape. But the other five children, Maurice, Martha, Louis, Jenny, and Betty, aged between five and 14, were still inside. As the flames grew more intense, George Sauter desperately tried to re-enter the burning house. But the doors were locked, and the windows were blocked by an intense wall of fire. In the chaos, the family discovered that their ladder, usually propped up against the side of the house, was mysteriously missing. George even tried to drive his trucks closer to the house to climb onto the roof, but both vehicles failed to start, despite being in perfect working order earlier that day. The desperate family could only watch in horror as their home burned to the ground, seemingly taking the lives of their five beloved children. As the sun rose on Christmas morning, the devastated Sauter family surveyed the smoldering ruins of their home. Local firefighters who had been delayed in responding to the blaze arrived to conduct a preliminary investigation. However, what should have been an open and shut case of tragic accidental death quickly became a baffling mystery. The firefighters found no human remains in the ashes, no bones, no teeth, nothing to suggest that five children had perished in the fire. The fire chief, F.J. Morris, insisted that the fire simply had burned too hot and too quickly for any remains to be left behind. Despite this unusual claim, the fire was ruled an accident caused by faulty wiring, and the case was closed. But the Sodders refused to accept this explanation. They conducted their own experiments, burning animal bones in similar conditions to see if they would be reduced to ash. Time and time again, they found bones remaining in even the most intense fires. The missing ladder was eventually found in a nearby embankment, and it was discovered that the house's telephone line had been cut, not burned. All of these puzzling elements only deepened the mystery surrounding the fate of the Sauter children. Fueled by their love for their lost children and a growing suspicion of foul play, George and Jenny Sauter embarked on a relentless quest for answers. They hired private detectives, consulted psychics, and even enlisted the help of the FBI. But their efforts were met with resistance from local authorities who maintained that the fire was a tragic accident. Undeterred, the Sauters began to uncover a web of strange coincidences and suspicious encounters. Prior to the fire, George had received threats from a disgruntled former employee who had been fired for stealing. 
Additionally, George's criticism of Italian dictator Benito Mussolini had made him some enemies within the local Italian community. As the years passed, the Sauter family received tantalizing tips and alleged sightings of their missing children. From a waitress in Charleston who claimed to have served breakfast to the children shortly after the fire, to a letter from a woman in St. Louis saying she had seen the missing Sauter children in a hotel. Each lead seemed to offer a glimmer of hope that their children were still alive. In 1968, more than two decades after the fire, the Sodders received an anonymous envelope containing a photograph of a young man in his mid-twenties who bore a striking resemblance to their son, Louis. On the back of the photo, a cryptic message read, Louis Sodder, I love brother Frankie, I lil boys, A90132 or 35. Despite their best efforts, the Sodders could not trace the origin of the photograph or confirm the identity of the man pictured. In a curious turn of events, George stumbled upon a magazine featuring a troupe of young ballet dancers in New York City. Among them, a girl with an uncanny resemblance to his vanished daughter, Betty. Compelled by a father's determination, George traveled to the girl's school, only to be met with refusal when he persistently demanded to see her. Wanting to involve federal authorities, George reached out to the FBI, receiving a response from the director, J. Edgar Hoover. Hoover expressed empathy but clarified that the case seemed to be of local nature, and the FBI could only intervene if local authorities requested their assistance. Regrettably, the Fayetteville Police and Fire Departments declined the offer. In August 1949, George succeeded in convincing Oscar Hunter, a prominent pathologist from Washington, D.C., to supervise a renewed excavation at the site of their former home. After an exhaustive search, they unearthed several artifacts, including a dictionary that belonged to the children, some coins, and a few small human bone fragments. These fragments, identified as lumbar vertebrae from a single individual, were sent to Marshall T. Newman, an expert at the Smithsonian Institution. Newman's analysis revealed that the bones belonged to someone between 16 and 22 years old at the time of death, which made it improbable that they belonged to any of the missing Sauter children. Moreover, the bone fragments exhibited no signs of fire exposure, and it was considered highly peculiar that only these bone fragments were found in the remains. The report concluded that the vertebrae likely originated from the soil George used when he bulldozed the property. In spite of these revelations, the West Virginia legislature conducted two hearings on the case in 1950. Subsequently, Governor Oki L. Patterson and State Police Superintendent W.E. Burchett announced to the Sodders that the case was hopeless and formally closed at the state level. The FBI, which had initially believed it had jurisdiction due to the possibility of interstate kidnapping, abandoned the case after two years of unproductive leads. Over the years, numerous theories have been proposed to explain the Sauter children's disappearance. Some believe that the children were kidnapped in a mafia vendetta, a punishment for George's outspoken views against Mussolini. Others suggest that the children were victims of a child trafficking ring, spirited away in the night and sold to new families. Another theory speculates that the children may have been taken by government agents either as part of a secret experiment or in retribution for George's criticism of the Italian regime. With so few concrete answers, the case remains a source of endless fascination and speculation for amateur sleuths and professional investigators alike. The Sauter family's tireless search for their missing children continued until George's death in 1969 and Jenny's in 1989. The surviving Sauter siblings, now elderly, have kept their parents' quest alive, haunted by the lingering question of what happened to their brothers and sisters on that fateful night in 1945. The story of the Sauter children's disappearance has become a dark chapter in West Virginia's history, a tragic tale that resonates with families across the nation who have experienced the pain of losing a loved one in inexplicable circumstances. For now, the mystery remains unsolved, a haunting reminder of the fragility of life and the enduring power of a family's love. As we delve into the shadows of this chilling case, we are left to ponder the secrets that still lie buried beneath the ashes of the Sauter home. Perhaps one day the truth will finally be revealed, bringing closure to a family that has been tormented by uncertainty for decades. 
Until then, the enigma of the Sodder children disappearance endures, a poignant testament to the power of hope in the face of unimaginable loss.